Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. This is a gift from Titan of Whiskey, Ryan Butler. Daniel, the distance you hear? I've heard it. Could it be? Cheers, you magnificent bastards. Doers, but not just any doers. Doers, Portuguese smooth. I don't know what that means. It means they used port casks. Ooh, I like port. Uh, a port cask finish. This is an eight-year-old blended doers that then spent time in port casks. Okay. Up to six months, they said, in ruby port casks. I, so it's not, it's not straight up and down doers. There's no. definitely something. Yeah, but it still starts with that malt musty note that I get in the blended doers. It, but then immediately it shifts gears. It's like the port on the nose, I'm tasting. It's like the port, it was an additive. Mm -hmm. It's not like, well, here's your doers and then here's another layer of port, mm -hmm. which was... Kind of the experience with the mezcal. Yeah, I was like, doers. whoa, that's mezcal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like basically here's your doers and then a shift gears really hard and now we're in the mezcal. This on the nose, it's like, huh. Ah. It's together. Yeah, it's it's it, it didn't combine. It kind of definitely turned into a new and different thing. I got some I mean, roses. It didn't, it didn't layer, it didn't it, it combined into a new and different thing. I got some roses over the weekend. Yeah. And this is reminding me of that that like fresh cut rose. Yeah. The rose petals. Yeah. And it's not like a sweet smell. Mm -mm. Like rose petals, they look like they'd smell all sweet and stuff. No, and they're perfumey, but they're not sweet. Right. And then there's like, uh, am I finding the wood? I think I'm finding some wood. Maybe. I'm getting a, almost a fruit note buried back in there too. You know what? This is, because I had some wine over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, this is like the nose of a kind of a dry red with... That maltiness. I can see what you mean, like an oat, an actual oat barrel red. Yeah. All right, I'm going in. That's very drinkable. It is. It's very and simple, sweet. It doesn't fruit go in any crazy directions. It actually drinks more like a, that really soft, woody wine. Yeah. With all of the then all of the malts and all of the barley and the. I'd be curious how much sloshing around they have in those barrels, <laughs> because how fresh are the dumps on those barrels? Yeah, uh, because that's a very um, yeah present amber color. I mean, even in a small pour, you can see the that. Um, honestly, that might be the doers that I introduce people to, like a, a nicer, approachable budget blend. You know what I mean? I think it's. Nicely balanced, well executed. Mm -hmm. I am struggling to name specific notes because I think the port is influencing this so much that it's pulling it away from traditional, those malty scotch flavors right. and towards like, oh, there's new notes that you aren't going to find in a whiskey unless it has a heavily influenced finish. A heavy influence from the finish. Yeah, it also sort of like muddies the distinctions. So it feels to me like the connective tissue between the different flavor notes is sort of blurred. Yeah. Right? Like it's, this is a watercolor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I'm still going to get the doers 
12. Going back to it being very drinkable, there's no pokiness, bitiness, it's not hot. I, I'm not finding an ethanol layer more than something that I would typically get out of a low proof. I'm assuming this is 40. Yep, 40%. You know what? That's nice flavor. That's a nice amount of flavor for a 40%. You know, I mean, not and 12. I, I think I definitely like this more than the standard doers. Okay, if you just got standard white label, here's the standard white label. Yeah. Right. You see the color difference? Yeah. I mean, who knows if there's shenanigans with the coloring, but like port. Probably. Yeah, but still the pour, that's if there's some slosh in there. There's your malt, musty, slightly grain forward. Yeah. Slightly lemon. Yeah, yeah, the lemon note for vanilla. sure. Vanilla. That's more um squarely within the wheelhouse of just a straight up and down whiskey. Okay. Now you see how much of that wine sweetness wow. is in that doer. So, in the AB, yeah. definite upgrade. Yeah. Dramatic upgrade. Yeah. Uh, not my preferred category because it's so sweet and sort of... It's like... It's, it's like... Hold on. If blended scotch had a Gaussian blur. It's not... <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it's not sugary dessert sweetness, mm -mm. though. No, it's not. It's more nature sweetness. Yeah, this is. And like it's floral sweetness, not fruity sweetness, because I know you don't eat flowers. Yeah. But yeah. What? Uh, what's the when you used to glam? This is a glamour photo studio. What? <laughs> From the eighties. <laughs> glamour photos with the. Okay. Background blur and uh -huh. the soft edges of everything. And you could almost oh. be in a, an actor in a right. soap opera. Soap opera is what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put Vaseline on the lens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. But it's not. I mean, it's just like, ooh, that's nice. Very, very rounded off. It's like it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And it, it lost the brittleness of a budget blend. It did. That's what I'm saying. It is an improvement. Yeah. Like the things where it's like a low proof and thin and you know, yeah, that's all brittle good. And blah, blah. <laughs> the port finish just filled in all those gaps. It really did. Took it a little outside the, the realm of what you would normally expect from whiskey, but the flavors that are there. It's like whiskey caulking. <laughs> uh huh. Kangabolic. Can someone explain to me the bottles opening up with time? Hmm. I hear content creators in the whiskey too mention this all the time. I try to pour 1920 from a whiskey bar, immediately purchased a bottle, but it's nowhere near what I experienced at the bar. Mm. Does it need to open up? Because there's two parts to that. There's One a, is there's a lot of vagaries in here, but go ahead. Yeah, the first, everything about your experience at that bar is going to change your experience with that whiskey. If you're having fun with friends, what you had before that, type like, of glass. how much money you spent on that pour, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna try this thing. Right. And then you're gonna go to the store and buy it. It's not gonna be the same at your own home. Well, that's assuming the they've been taking care of the whiskey appropriately. Yeah. It wasn't like left open, and maybe you got something that was really subdued. Because well, 1920, been, they're not gonna leave that open. They're not gonna leave no, it open? No, that's, uh, one they, that's one they cap. You have, that's one with no pour You spots. get a lot of benefit of the doubt. I've you know, looked behind is, some bars and been like, really? On that one? Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, this one's a little too expensive to a bar to, to around with. The, but it does happen when you leave a specifically glass, but in a bottle as air interacts with it, mm -hmm. things evaporate, not dramatically, in a glass, dramatic. In a bottle, not dramatically at first. But once you let those things out, you're lowering the alcohol content, less of the flavor uh, chains hold together on a lower proof. Right. So it absolutely will change. So we're talking Not about- always for the better. Like neck pour. Yeah, we're talking about oxidation in a bottle. Right. So or a glass. A lot of people say like, once you get past the neck pour, it really opens up. That's mm -hmm. a common thing that you hear said. Uh, another thing is, uh, I don't think we should discount how much flavor drift is possible, even in big brands. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. But this is a small enough release from the, or big enough release that I think it, Dude, we, it likely. We uh, had brands that were noticeably. Yeah, but Monkey Shoulder actually changed where they were sourcing things. Yes, but different from yeah, Monkey yeah, Shoulder. Yeah, We've yeah. had like probably half a dozen at this point. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is, it's not a different whiskey. Right. But it's noticeably. Check the batch number. Yeah, but but give it time. Let, let it sit in a glass for a while. Drink it over an hour. Let it sit in the bottle. Don't give up on it. Or just send it to me. Or send it to Rex. Yeah. Zach Corum, the new Titan video is a work of art. 
Mm. Yes. And uh, number two. Uh, it's tro totally strong bad. And then two, Emma wins. If you know, you know. I fixed it. She don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, pleasantly surprised. Right? Me too. Pleasantly surprised. I was thinking it would be like a band-aided on patch kit, mm -hmm. but it really married into it. You know what I'm appreciating about these doers? is that they're not just like putting it in there to change up a label and then have a minimal effect. Yeah, no, they're very different. Yeah, it is from the, you know, I don't think the rum was my favorite, uh, but the well, mezcal, but that was a tried, funky adventure. We tried what turned out to be a bad bottle. So. On the rum. Flavor drift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, this thing, mm -hmm. I think it's probably like three, maybe four doers we've tried to this point. Every single one, you're not hunting for a difference. Here's my favorite thing about it. In the category of budget blends, and right. this is still, even with the, the upgrade, a budget blend, mm -hmm. doers is doing something where I wouldn't have each of those bottles because it's so such an exploration of budget blends. Like, I would totally get the mezcal yeah. because it's like, whoa, guys, have you tried this shit? Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I would try this one because it'd be like, guys, this is an easy drinker. Yeah. After we pour the fancy shit, mm -hmm. we're going to drink this and really enjoy it, but we're not going to worry about how much our friend who doesn't drink whiskey normally pours. What do you think the chances are of a little bit of the E150? Oh, yeah. I think, think? pretty high, yeah. I think. Because if, if there's no E150, yeah. it's quite a bit of... Either this like a sloppy wet barrel, yeah, or a lot of like sloshing around. In I think it's possible. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. Because hey, I mean, look at this. They didn't e150 that, or right, but it's or they did, label. but it was so clear. Yeah, <laughs> even all the e150. It's basically could... vodka. All right, all right. Here's the fighting stealing you drink. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your liver, And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.